My name is Connor Moran. I'm the director of the Wisconsin Book Festival. Um, welcome to everyone who's come out tonight to see Ruth Reichel. You can applaud again. For, I would be willing to wager that everyone in this room has been touched by Ruth's writing in one way or another, um, be it as a novelist or as a food critic or as a beloved editor um, at beloved food magazines. Uh, she has been ever-present in our life for more than 40 years. Is that rude to say? I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> she is, uh, the best thing about her is that she is an incredible person, too. It's not just that she affects us on the page. Um, and it is my distinct pleasure tonight to be able to bring that experience to all of you. And so without further ado, here is Ruth Reichel. I feel like I've gotten to know Connor very well today, which started at um, 6 o'clock, oh, actually 5.30 this morning when I started texting saying, they just took us off the plane. I'm not going to get there. And went on all day as one airplane disaster after another occurred. So um, we became very intimate on, <laughs> on these texts. Um, and he was wonderfully unflappable. Um, I thought that uh, I would tell you a little bit about how I became a restaurant critic. Um, I have written in Tender at the Bone about how I got this amazing opportunity to write a restaurant review. I was living in a commune in Berkeley and um, part of a collective restaurant. And um, I was also doing a little bit of writing for New West. And um, I was writing mostly about art, which was my background. And one of my editors came into my restaurant to eat almost every night. And one night, he just looked at me as if this light bulb was going off over his head and said, you know, you're a much better writer than our restaurant critic. And you know food. Have you ever thought about being a restaurant critic? And I have to tell you that my first thought was not, oh, a new career. My first thought was free meals. <laughs> They're going to send us out to eat free meals. They're going to pay for them. Um, and I mean, we were living in a commune. We were really poor. So this was a very exciting prospect. And uh, so I said, well, why don't you try me? And so I've written in Tender at the Bone about how I went out for this first review and felt as if everything I had been doing up until that point in my life was sort of, had been leading to that, and that every restaurant I'd ever worked in, every chef I had ever worked for, every waitress who had ever trained me had lined up behind me to help me write the first review. But I've never written about the next one, because what happened was I turned this one in, and uh, the editor said, this is really nice, but you know, I think before we fire our restaurant critic, we bet you better write another one. We better make sure that we're not making a huge mistake here. So I said, well, what do you want me to review? And to my delight, he chose the fanciest French restaurant in San Francisco, a place in the marina called Robert. And so I go home to my commune and tell everyone <laughs> that we are about to go to this very fancy French restaurant on New West's money, and that the first thing we have to do is go to Value Village and get clothes, because <laughs> none of us have appropriate clothing. So we go to our local thrift store, and we deck ourselves out, and we gather in the hallway of our Victorian Berkeley home, and we think we look pretty swell. I mean, we're pretty impressed with how we look. And we then climb into my husband's van to make the trip to San Francisco. Well, Doug is an artist, and he had a windowless panel van. But he had figured out how to make something that was better than windows. He had painted the entire interior of the van white 
put mattresses on the floor, put a board behind the two front seats with a pinhole in it, creating a mobile camera obscura. <laughs> so when you lay down on the mattresses, the passing landscape was projected upside down on the walls of <laughs> the van. So we all climb into Doug's van and lay down and go across the bridge to San Francisco, um, you know, marveling at how much better this is than Windows. <laughs> and of course, we cannot give this vehicle, I mean, it's not a vehicle, it's a work of art. We can't give this to a valet. So we um, spend a long time you know, San Francisco parking is impossible. So we spend a long time looking for a place to park, and then we climb out like clowns getting out of a circus vehicle, brush ourselves off, and go into Robert.